um, and then yung advertising. Yeah, yeah, but the dominant uh, character here, uh, Mr. Chair, is about sports, uh, culture, so, asan education. So, asan doon yung extension? Asan doon yung term extension? Hindi, y- ito lang ang sinasabi ko yung item 6 Kaya na, item yung, uh, the one that is being alluded to us is term extension. So, <coughs> wala akong politika. Wala akong uh, politika. Eh, thank you, Mr. Chair. My, my discomfort in the present discussion is the inability of all the presenters to make us believe that amending the restrictive provisions of the Constitution is the way forward. I have not heard any of the presenters, Mr. Speaker, that they have at least asked the potential investors, whoever they are, the current and potential investors, did they talk to them? Did they ask them what they really wanted? Because probably we're not getting enough uh, foreign direct investments because of the traffic, because of the high cost of electricity, because probably they think that peace and order is very unstable in this country, and probably the high cost of uh, doing business in this country. These are all the things that they should have considered. I have not heard any of them, Mr. Mr. Chair, that they have probably made a survey. And in the survey, it's 99.9% the potential investors really wanted, okay, to amend the Constitution, specifically which which part? The part which uh, they wanted to buy our lands? E sana ganun sa... Mr. Chair, Sa ngayon, it's very much under speculation. Why is it that the most important people or respondents that should have been asked are absent? Eh, sila, sila yung iniimbita natin eh. Is it not correct for us to be able to ask them first? Ano mo talagang gusto nyo para kayo makapag-invest ng marami dito sa bansang uh, uh, Pilipinas? Para matalo namin ang Vietnam. Ano ba talagang gusto nyo? O sabi nila, ayaw namin sa inyo kasi matrapik kayo. Eh. O hindi na natin niya-amend ng Constitution. Mr. Chair, na nakalulungkot, sinasabi nating lahat, the economic presenters, sinabi nila, oh, tayo ay ano, masyado tayong malayo sa Vietnam. Tingnan mo ang ano, performance natin on foreign investors. We are lagging behind. Ganito, lahat. And I believe so, na siguro talagang tayo ang pinaka- Kulelat, Mr. Chair. But we have not asked them, is it really the economic provisions, the factors or the main reasons why there is a sluggish entry or inflow of foreign investment in this country? Yun po yung nakita ko. Wala pong nag-present ng ganun. There should have been a comparative presentation na tining na pinagtatanong po natin ang potential investors natin mga capitalist mga foreign capitalist kung ang gusto talaga nila ay baguhin natin ang ating uh, constitution in relation to its economic provisions thank you wala uh, po akong narinig Mr. Chair yeah thank may you answer that, may answer that uh, yes, Mr. Chair uh, thank you um, Deputy Speaker Marcoleta in fact we have a consolidated um, matrix of position of resource person on specific amendments of the 1987 Constitution with regard to um, the economic restricted provision. And uh, the business groups that were invited before and submitted their position papers in the 16th, 17th, and 18th Congress. Because as you know, uh, Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, this is just a continuation of hearing. Before we already had a committee hearing uh, in, in this regard. And uh, just to cite some of the business groups that um, submitted their position papers, Amcham, the American Chamber of Commerce, Mr. John Forbes, they agree with the changing of the economic provisions of the 1987 Constitution, even though the Philippines has experienced an increase in foreign investment in recent years, it still pales comparison with more affluent neighbors in this regard. However, it takes the position that there's no need to allow foreign ownership of lands extending the years of leasing lands may already suffice for purposes of investment. Joint foreign chambers of the Philippines said they are amenable to removing restriction without condition for investment climate policy reform. This is to permit uh, more capital to flow into the Philippines to increase the rate of GDP growth. Employment also agrees with 100% ownership of 
lands. Makati Business Club agrees with the lifting of restriction and or putting lower barriers to trade and investment and states that in competitive global economy, any barrier should be subject to modification and subject and specific restrictions should be left to the legislature. Um, Management Association uh, of the Philippines agrees with the removal of the equity restriction. Mr. Peter Wallace, of President uh, Business uh, forum recommends the removal of the economic restriction allowing foreign ownership. So um, we can um, cite so many positions of the resource person that was invited before coming from um, the business groups, uh, players in our economic sectors, and those who participate in our national patrimony. And uh, they are uh, submitted all their positions paper before this committee. Um, at any rate, uh, Deputy Speaker, we will invite them again. Mr. Chair, yes, I read that part already. Most of them are domestic groups. Well, siguro kaiba lang, American Chamber. But pero ilan sila? Ilang Amerikano ang nag invest dito? Ang sinasabi natin, let us talk to the potential investors worldwide. Hindi lamang kukunting Amerikano na nagsabi na ganito yung gusto nating gawin. We yes, the Joint Foreign Chambers of uh, Foreign Chambers of the Philippines is composed of James Wilkins of the American Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, Daniel Alexander, the President of Australia, New Zealand Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, Julian Payne, the President of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, uh, Nabel Francis, European Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, uh, Kichi Matsunaga, Japanese Chamber of Commerce and Industry of the Philippines, and Ho Ik Lee, Korean Chamber of Commerce, and Evelyn Nang, the Philippine Association of Multinational Companies, President Regional Headquarters. So these are multinationals uh, in the joint. Uh, yeah, but, but this, these are not the representative potential investors. Yun, yun ang ating sinasabi rito. Uh, Mr. Chair, we are proposing to amend our fundamental law. It should have been backed up by a well-researched study presented by a group involving potential investors worldwide. Not only a few Americans or a few Australians and a handful of Japanese or Koreans. Chinese. And Chinese. Thank you very much. Kaya kailangan, nandun yung talag, kitang-kita mo talaga, each one of them are itching and proposing to us, please amend your constitution, specifically uh, okay. provisions 1, 2, 3, and 4. Kasi tayong lahat, sinasabi natin, kailangan po natin i-amend. Baligtad po eh, parang nga nangyayari, we are putting the, the carabao ahead of the cart. Well, I think uh, Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, in all of the research person that we have asked to present, they have their own position papers and back up with the data and analysis of uh, their study. In fact, one uh, that was presented by Kong Joe Wizazeda was the study by OECD and the World Bank, where it shows that those restrictive countries, restrictive economy, economy tends to receive um, less uh, foreign direct investment or inflows of foreign capital. So, yun siguro po yung hinahanap po. And uh, we have an OECD study uh, that uh, shows uh, the flows of foreign direct investment. I, I fully understand your point that we need to, uh, to invite the, play, the players, uh, to invite the, play, the players in the economic sector as well as those who want to participate in our national patrimony and come up with their position on what provision in the constitutions uh, should be lifted so that they be encouraged to participate. Mr. Chair, yes. Kanina yung ating, uh, uh, from the DILD, he presented his uh, report mm -hmm. and it touched base with so many sectors of our population. And he came up with this list. So, I, I believe in this list and probably these are all active signatures composing of something like 556,000 people wanting to uh, amend our constitution. Pero sabi ko nga, he could have gathered 55 million votes. Kung pinresent niya sa mga tao, tingnan mo, lahat ng potential investors in, in, the, in this planet, 
talagang papunta sila sa atin kung i-amend ang constitution natin. Palagay ko ako, pipirma na rin kagad ako. Sapagat nakita ko mismo, ang nagsalita are potential investors. These are the correct respondents that should have influenced our decision. Talaga palang kailangan nating i-amend ang constitution. Hindi tayong nauuna. Oh, teka muna. Kulay lahat tayo. Eh kaya pala tayo kulay lahat. Nagatatakot sila dahil malala ang traffic natin. Eh, masyadong, para siya makakuha ng permit, Mr. Chair, it will take him three, 30 days. So yeah, I fully understand Singapore, your point. Uh, the, one day lamang yun. Yes, ano? yes, Pagkatapos ang kuryente mo, napakataas. Baka, baka ako, these are the factors that discourage the um, potential investors from coming in. Ako, na, ako kung talagang ma-identify natin ngayon din, talagang lumitaw, 99.9, ito talagang gusto ng mga investors. Sino naman tayo para hindi tayo, di ba? Masway dun sa kanong argument. I fully understand your point, uh, Deputy Speaker. In fact, those are essentially domestic problems that can be addressed uh, uh, by, of course, good governance and uh, political will. But you're speaking of uh, restrictive economic provisions of the Constitution that can only be resolved uh, through constitutional amendments. Those areas, you need not resort to constitutional amendment by solving the traffic and the high cost of electricity. But uh, these uh, sectors and areas of concern, economic, restrictive economic provision, really calls for a meaningful constitutional reform by lifting the said provisions. Mr. So Chair, I'm only, out, I'm only uh, trying to explain that yes. gusto natin palabasin the chief factors talaga kaya natin inamid ang constitution ini-encourage tayo talaga ng potential investors kasi ang talagang ina lang natin are economic provisions. Kaya ko lang naman nasasabi ang traffic baka naman doon sila natatakot baka naman natatakot sila sa kuryente Uh, gusto ko lang linamay kasi baka mamaya mamisinterpret ninyo ako na i-amend natin ang constitution because gusto nating masolve ang traffic. Hindi ganon. Salamat, uh, Tatay uh, Dante Marcoleta. Um, kung Manong Ed Selagman, uh, can you please uh, wind up? Can we... Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, kung Lagman, you will still have more time in yeah. our I, I, sitting I, hearings. I will reduce my question to only one. I will Thank you. Thank, thank you, Manong Edsel. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, This is a question to Yusek uh, Jonathan Malaya. If he's still wala there. na po, Manong Edsel. Umalis na po si Yusek Jonathan. But okay. in the sitting hearing, we will invite him to be physically present or at least in the Zoom. Uh, so please reserve your question to Yusek Jonathan Malaya. Okay. Thank Mr. you, Chair. Chairman, for this opportunity. Thank you, uh, Congressman Lagman. Mr. Chair. Yes, um, very brief, uh, Kong uh, Stella, because the last to ask or manifest is Kong Ron Salo. Kong Stella, you're now recognized. Hindi po, Mr. Chair. Very short response lang po dun sa sinabi ni Kong Kit. Um, ang sa tingin ko po yung... Um, the decision to own land versus the decision to lease land, I think that should really be a business decision that should be made available to foreign investors. So tama naman po na in many situations, a lease arrangement would work. But also in certain situations, mas malaki ang return kapag pinayagan mong uh, uh, bilhin or i-own ng isang uh, foreign businessman ang lupain. So sa tingin ko po, um, that's the essence of allowing flexibility. Nakilangan po, um, uh, bigyan ng pagkakataon na gumawa ng the best business decision. And that would include the decision to either own or or lease land. And so therefore, uh, Mr. Chair, I really stick by my position na sana po payagan na po ang uh, limited amount of uh, ownership by foreigners po. Thank you.